Good morning. Um, I have been working on this painting the last couple of days and I don't mind telling you that I wanted it just to be a painting of some spring branches, uh, a crab apple blooming. Um, and I did that and I had all that pink stuff going on and I stepped back and I looked at it and it was just boring. So I needed to pull something else in. So in my normal uh, mode of operation, I decided that I needed some contrast and it didn't matter to me necessarily that I stayed true to my reference photo. I just needed to put something else in there. And so I added these tulips. Um, now I'll tell you that sometimes tulips are hard for me and I don't know why. Tulips are one of my favorite flowers, but I have a hard time painting them sometimes. So I'm gonna show you what I did to keep myself honest and, and make it possible for me to paint tulips like these that I like, because I like these. I think these look good. I'm actually pretty proud of myself. So the first thing I needed to do was go back and, well, first decide where I was gonna put them. Since there's not a reference photo, it's up to me for composition. The first thing I needed to do was go back and put in some of the ultramarine blue that was the original background color. So I needed to add some of this in the spot where the tulips were gonna go. Oop, I got some, yay. All right, it's golden fluid acrylics. That's what I use 99.999% of the time. It's the best stuff ever. I encourage you to try it and know they're not paying me to say that. So I've still got some yellow on my brush, but I just picked up some blue and I'm gonna put it on the painting. Okay, you can see where these are, right? These tulips. And when I'm looking at this, and I've looked at it through my phone, and I've taken a picture, and I've stepped back six feet or so, and I've squinted at it, and I've decided that the if I'm gonna add another tulip, it needs to go, or I want it to go, in this area over here. Um, and I could put it close, or I could put it over here with kind of some stem going out, which I think would be more natural, so that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm going to paint this blue. Now this has got just a twinge of green going on, but I'm going to paint a tulip shaped blob o blue. And I'm also, I think I'm going to go back and put a little more right there. All right, so that's what I got. And I'm going to let that dry. Okay, so the the blue, the ultramarine blue is dried, and I put a stripe right there, partly just to see if it's dried, and then partly because I got on the phone and started talking to my friend Shannon, and I just forgot what I was doing, and I started painting those, and I had to stop myself. So I'm gonna go over here. I have a combination of a tawny yellow, which is usually Darylide yellow from Golden, I've also got a yellow ochre remnants here and here somewhere. Um, and then I have just whatever bright yellow I had too, which right now is that Hansa yellow. So I'm going to go back over here. I got some of that darker tawny on my brush. <clears throat> it could be, it could lean more. Let me get this where you can see it towards the yellow ochre too. I'm just trying to get a darker yellow. Yellows are hard for me. I'm trying to get a darker yellow to start with. So if you see, you know, where I, I, the benefits of using a big brush, right? Here's a big, bigger brush. This is a one inch. When I painted these blue shapes, there are dark pieces and light pieces. And I wasn't really trying to, to achieve that when I started, but I'm going to use it now to paint these tulips because, you know, it's going to help me designate where these petals are. So I'm going to go back over here. Okay, so here we are, dark color. The light's coming from this direction. You can see, because I've got some light highlights on this other stuff. So I'm gonna come down and put this darker color right here on this side and towards the bottom a little. Got outside the line there a little bit. It's hard to hold the phone. It's hard to hold the phone and do this at the same time. So I 
I don't have my little phone holder out at the moment. So I've got dark color, and here I've got dark color, and I'm kind of just ignoring that light swipe I put in there before, even though it will show up somewhat, but that's okay. So I put some dark in there. Without rinsing out my brush, I have now picked up some of the lighter color of what the tulip's gonna be. I'm putting that there. Putting that on this side. So that's kind of my basis for colors on the tulip. I'm not covering all that blue up because I want some of that to, to show me where the petals stop and start. Okay, so just to get a close-up of where I am, there's that one, there's that one. I got a lot of blue showing around the edges, and I like that. And I've got some, oops, I got some dark color, you see right in here. It's got some yellow on top, but it's obviously darker. I'm going to do my darndest not to cover that up. All right, so now I'm going back. I picked up some white with the brighter yellow. Actually, this is exactly what was on my brush a second ago when we started. You know, I picked up all these different colors. I haven't rinsed my brush out. I'm not going to, but I am adding, I added a little white to it. And I'm gonna do this addition up here as well. Okay, so after I've put some white on my brush, and I've made, you know, you saw me, very basic strokes in there, that's what my tulips look like. Now, I like to add a little bit of green on the bottom. So, my go-to green is sap green, but nowadays, I like to use that maybe as a base and then add stuff to it. So, I have ultramarine blue, and I got all these yellows. I got yellow in my brush, so I'm just going to make my own green. Ultramarine blue and yellow of any kind make a nice green. So, it's a little bit of a yellow green, but spring greens are a little bit of yellow, yellowy. So, I'm going to take that and add it to the bottom of my tulip for um, color. All right. So here's some green, and you don't have to get crazy with this, just a little bit. Oops, I didn't scoot over enough. Some very light green. And to keep it consistent, you can go over and add a swipe of this to your other tulips. That's important. Okay, so here she is after the addition of the tulips. Um, and I think that the tulips solved the, the issue, the problem of the painting being boring, or at least boring in my estimation. Um, and if you like this painting and you want to um, learn how to paint some spring branches, or at least how I paint them, then make sure you're paying attention to my feed um, because I'll be posting information about the next class, which will pop up um, for, should be available late March, and it'll be on painting for Scythia. Um, and we will probably, I say we, like there's more than one of me. I wish there was. Um, I'll show you uh, not only how to do for Scythia, but, but some other spring branches as well, hopefully. So see you there. Bye.